Let's talk about five things that can make you a more successful developer that you may not have thought about before. What's up everyone? My name is James Q. Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And today I wanna to take more of a career meta approach and talk about how to become a more successful developer. Now you can define successful developer in a lot of different ways. It could be your title, it could be salary, it could be the company you work for, it could be your uh, knowledge of a programming language or framework or whatever it is. And we'll talk about a few of those different things in these five different bullet points. But I wanted to take a slightly different approach, not just the like, how good can you write code? I wanna give you some like complimentary things to think about in your career that can help take your software development career to the next level and become more successful as a developer. Uh, so let's go ahead and just dive in. So number one is being able to choose the right tool for the job. Now this seems like a pretty easy one. Maybe it seems really obvious, but in the world of tech, in the world of web development specifically, in the JavaScript ecosystem specifically, this is a really difficult thing to do because there's tons of frameworks, there's tons of tools, there's tons of hosting providers and all these different things, which means for you to choose the right tool for the right job means you have to understand a lot about a lot of different technologies. But I think a lot of this comes with the ability to adapt. So here's what I've seen in my career of other developers. They use a certain language or framework for a couple of years, and that's kind of what they sit on. That's what they use for any application that comes up. That's what they immediately go to. And they're not necessarily looking to learn different frameworks, tools, hosting platforms, et cetera. So they end up using something that may not be optimal for the solution that they are trying to come up with. So sometimes like you can solve the same problem with a lot of different things and there's some small trade-offs, but those become more and more important as you work on higher performance application or requirements for performance applications. Uh, scale of your applications and all those things. So if you want to be looked at as a leader in your organization, a leader on your development team, you're going to have to help educate and help make decisions on what technologies to use because those requirements, the performance, the scalability of your application becomes more and more important the farther you go along. Now, this can kind of lead to potential opportunities as a software developer from a career ladder perspective to move into something like architecture. I'll talk more about this in a few minutes, but I uh, became an architect in my career at FedEx where I was having more of those discussions to help people make decisions about what to use, how to connect applications, et cetera. So having that knowledge now opens up more opportunities for you to, for you to progress in the traditional career ladder. Again, I'll talk more about that from my perspective in a second. So number two, to kind of follow up on that is taking additional training opportunities. Now, this is something I see a ton. We talked about like there's a million different languages and frameworks and tools. There's all these different things. How do you keep up to date with that? Well, I've got lots of different pieces of advice on how to stay up to date, getting involved in community, all those things. But one of the easiest things to do is just taking advantage of career training opportunities. Now, ask yourself this question. When's the last time you went to a tech conference? When's the last time that you took an online webinar? that you took a seminar, I don't know what the difference there would be, hands-on webinar, seminar, took an online course, et cetera. And I know some people kind of look at this and they say, you know, I work 40 hours a week. I don't have time to be doing those additional things outside of my work hours. Well, here's the key. I think that should be a built-in part of your career at any company. I think companies should support you in your learning journey because the more you learn, the more you're gonna be able to bring back to the company and help make those more educated decisions about what to use and when. So here's a couple of different things. If there is an opportunity internally at your company, maybe you have a bigger company and uh, they do webinars once a month or something, go and attend those, that seems pretty easy. You can also ask for time off to attend a conference, even if they don't support by paying for you to go to a conference, which you should ask that as well. You can also just ask for, hey, I would like to watch this virtual conference. There's a lot of that going on these days. I would like to watch these talks from this virtual conference today. Can I uh, have a day to not take vacation and do that? You can also ask for a dedicated amount of hours per week, for example, to do continual training. There's so many different ways to do this. I think the biggest thing that people don't do is they don't ask. There are tons of training opportunities out there, but it's your responsibility to go out and ask for the support to do that. Now, a lot of companies Unfortunately, you're not gonna be supportive of that, which I think is a very bad thing. And maybe that's a reason to look for other companies. But if you don't ask, you never know what will happen. So ask your manager, upper management, et cetera, 
to be able to take advantage of going to a conference, watching a conference online, taking a seminar, going to an in-person hands-on training, whatever that is, ask for that ability to do it, to not take vacation time, ask for support monetarily to do that and go out and learn and continue to learn and make that a part of your journey. It's very easy for us on a day-to-day basis to focus on, I have to write this code, I have to solve this problem without having the foresight to look a little bit forward but successful developers are also looking forward as they're then taking care of the things that they have on their plate at that moment. Now, a little bit from me, when I was at FedEx, I specifically asked for and got funding for uh, to go to a conference. I went to ng-conf in uh, Salt Lake City back in 2017, I think, because we were looking to use Angular. So that's a perfect way for me to advocate. We're now moving into using Angular. I want to go and be around Angular developers, watch talks from Google and Angular core team so I can learn about that and bring it back to the team. You also have to be able to like prove that worth when you come back by saying, here's the things that I learned. Here's how I can share this with the team, et cetera. So I did that. I also took advantage of several different um, training up in-person training opportunities that got passed around. It's very easy for people to see those, turn them down because they have stuff on their plate, but you have to prioritize training and learning and opportunities like that. And lastly, I got maybe over the course of a few different years, five, six, seven hundred dollars of support for online courses that I ended up going through. Again, this made me a better developer, a more well-rounded developer, and helped me then go into being able to share that knowledge with others. Which leads me to number three, which is to communicate better and help others. So the interesting thing about being a successful developer is that being a successful developer is not just about writing code. I talk about this a lot. I'll talk about this from my career perspective, but getting promoted as a developer is not just about the code that you write. It's about the impact that you can have on a team. It's about the leadership that you show on a team. And as you move up this progression of career ladder, it's about the sphere of influence that you have. So as you start out, you're really just influencing yourself. You're just learning and trying to do your job. As you get a little more comfortable, a little more knowledgeable, now you're trying to expand that knowledge maybe to some people on your team to help them as they onboard to a project, et cetera. As you become into that senior developer on a given team, now you're kind of the go-to person for people to come with questions and you can provide them answers and so on and so on, moving across multiple teams, organizations, et cetera. So your success in your career is not defined solely by the code that you write. It's about that sphere of influence and your ability to communicate and help others. A good communicator is going to be someone that can get promoted because with those promotions traditionally becomes more visibility, becomes more integration points with other teams. Having someone that can handle those conversations in a confident way, be able to explain technical concepts to people who are maybe less technical goes a long, long way. Now, the other part of this that kind of ties into taking those additional trainings is the ability to help others. Again, what's your impact, not only on yourself, but on your broader team? Can you help make other developers better? Can you help teach them about the new things that you're wanting to incorporate as you're taking these trainings, as you're choosing the right type of tool for the job? Can you help other people on your team and maybe other teams understand why? So for me in my career, I did technical evangelism for a few years and then I did software development at FedEx and I went to have a conversation with my manager to say, I would like to continue to grow as a leader on the team. And uh, and I had a big passion for teaching. So as we would onboard people, I would go out of my way to be kind of like their mentor, get them up to speed, et cetera. Something that I really enjoyed. I also was very vocal in meetings. I was vocal in bigger meetings across different teams. And so those communication skills that I had built from being a developer advocate or a technical evangelist at Microsoft now were kind of coming into play where she then recommended, hey, I think you are ready for a promotion as well. What do you think about being an architect, which happened to be a skip level promotion that doesn't happen very often at FedEx, but also then got me to the point where I was still very technical, but I was also able to stay abreast of some of the later technologies take advantage of the trainings and things that I was already interested in, and then share that knowledge across multiple teams and help make decisions across multiple teams to build applications in the optimal way as best we could. So I certainly had the technical aspect of this. I had done really well as a developer, but those additional skills, communication, teaching, leadership, those are the skills that took my career to the next level. Successful developers are also really good communicators and they also go out of their way in my mind to help others and help bring the team and other teams across teams up with them. All right, number four is to understand the use case or the business case of what you're doing. 
So a lot of us as developers, we uh, get a task. I don't know if you follow Agile or you take a story or whatever your process is, you know, I need to write the code that will do this thing. You go out and write the code that does that thing, and that's great. The difference here, though, is that successful developers are having a better understanding of the bigger picture. They have a better understanding of what the actual business use case is. They have a better understanding of how the business works and why this code that we are working on as a team or as an individual is important to the business. Now, the business is basically the collection of people who are making decisions about we want this functionality so that we can drive more efficiency, provide better support to our customers, make more money probably at the end of the day. So they are making decisions from a business perspective and they're communicating those things to development teams to go out and build the functionality that they're looking for. So understanding that business context is going to help you again, be a leader for your team. It's gonna help you write better software because your software is a direct correlation to the business use case that you're trying to solve. And then also, again, as a career progressive tool, your domain knowledge, your business knowledge, your understanding of how the business works means now you can have more and more of those cross team and cross organization conversations as a leader because you understand how other parts of the business work, not just the technology or not just the code that you write on a daily basis. So as you're going through your career, make sure to take a little bit of time to understand more about the business around you to help leverage that in your career. All right, so the last thing here, which is very meta, it sounds very cliche, but it's having excitement about what you're doing. We've probably all been there. We have a handful of developers on our team or in our organization, and they are just kind of set in their ways. They're gonna do their job for however many years until they retire. They're not excited about it. They don't necessarily have fun. They don't necessarily want to learn. They just want to do their job and go home. Now, first, I want to caveat. I'm not saying that the expectation of being excited about what you're doing means you should work extra hours. I'm a huge advocate of work-life balance. That's like the number one thing for me in terms of considering job opportunities. So I'm not saying work extra hours. I'm saying put yourself in a position to be excited about the thing that you're actually working on. Ask yourself now. Do you wake up every day or at least most of the days and are excited about the problems that you get to solve? Are you excited about the technologies you get to use to solve those problems? Are you excited about your level of decision making in the process for the things that you build? If the answer to those consistently is no, you need to reevaluate where you are, whether it's team, manager, company, uh, tech stack, whatever it is, you need to reevaluate what is it about your job that you do enjoy or what do you wish you could do more of and go and find that. Now, the reason I bring this up is it's very natural, it's like inevitable that the more excited we are about the thing we're doing, the more willing we're gonna be and the more excited we will be to do all the things that we just talked about. To do research and training opportunities to find the right tool for the job, to communicate and teach others because it's something that you're excited about. To understand the business use case because the whole thing is something that you're excited about. So you should be looking to put yourself in a, in a position to be excited about the thing that you're working on. I think it's no surprise that that will also show from a career perspective in you as a person, your confidence, your leadership, et cetera. So again, I'm not saying that your excitement or your passion has to come from a place of expecting you to work 60 or 80 hours a week. Absolutely not. I expect you to work your regular 40 hours a week or whatever your regular uh, hours are, but also find ways to put yourself in a position to do the things that make you most excited. People that become successful, I think, traditionally are actually excited about the thing that they're doing. Now, there's obviously scenarios where people progress in a career and it's something they hate because it's worth the money. That's not my take. I don't do that. I want to do stuff that I'm excited about that I enjoy because I think that shows with other people, especially with an audience on YouTube with the content that I create. I think it shows if I create something on a topic that I'm just not excited about, which is why I'm picky about the content that I do do on this channel. So find a way to put yourself in a position to be excited about the thing that you're working on. All right, so those are five things successful developers do that you may not have thought of. A little bit different than probably the traditional take that you would hear in this type of video. So I'm curious, let me know what you think about these and what kind of bullet points do you think I'm missing in the comments below. Also, if you have any, any other developer career conversation questions that you'd like me to walk through, leave those as well because I'm looking for more career content to do on this channel. As always, thank you for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.